Joe, mixing some things up now that we're battling on Zendikar, does have some cards from the new set. Uh, Conduit of Ruin alongside Ulamog the Ceaseless Hunger making an appearance in his modern deck. There are some good tools, though, for Joe in the matchup. The four copies of Pyroclasm. If, draw, if Todd does not draw a Nexus, Pyroclasm can be a game-winning play. And two main deck copies of Spellskite, not a card that Todd answers easily game one. All right, we are going to go ahead and start this off. Todd will get to see Joe's hand. A Pyroclasm, a Sylvan Scrying, a Chromatic Sphere. Joe also has two red-green lands and two pieces of Tron. So with the Scrying, Joe should be set up for what I believe is turn three Tron if he wants to get it. No big plays yet, but a cantrip in the hand, some land searching, and uh, one of his most important cards in the matchup in a Pyroclasm. Yeah, so this seems pretty reasonable, even just blind to the matchup. I mean, I can't imagine a Tron player ships turn three Tron, even though he has no, no large payoff yet. If you mulligan hands like that, you're going to just mulligan most of your hands. So that's got to be above the line, even though it isn't perfect. Well, here's the card that Joe did not want to see, and that's Glistener Elf from Todd Anderson. He'll make cr Chromatic Sphere and pass. So a green light for Todd to start put, tagging some infect on Joe. He knows about the Pyroclasm, however, which is very important. And we see this just main phase, Might of Old Cross of the Glistener Elf, pass. And now he has Pendlehaven at the ready as protection from Pyroclasm. He can get the Glistener Elf to up to three toughness at a moment's notice. Yeah, and this is just what's so hard, right? So Joe could have the turn two Clasm, and as long as Todd has one more Might of Old Cross, that's just game on turn three. Mm-hmm. I mean, game through a Pyroclasm. That's, this is Joe's best interactive card in the matchup, and, and it may not be enough. And Todd is missing blue mana to boot. Yeah, it's, it's, I mean, this just kind of puts a stamp on things really have to go Joe's way. So he cracks Chromatic Sphere. We'll see if it was for red or green. And he's going to go, it was for green, so it's Sylvan Scrying to find his third piece of Tron. And uh, this is a big statement from Joe. Just, you know, I, I suppose he can't class him, right? Yeah, I mean, it, it doesn't do anything, so he's just got to assemble Tron and hope that that works out for him. All right, he's going to hope he's not dead. Mutagenic Growth to draw for Todd. So that's nine, right, nine, in fact, if he uses the Pendlehaven. Yeah. All right, well, it's not 10, but he's got, wow. he's got lethal next turn. If he just attacks for one and passes the turn, the risk is if Lissette has found one of his big plays, Todd doesn't have lethal. But there's nothing he can really do about that. He can't punch through a worm coil, and he can't answer Karn, so he's just got to hope that yeah. Joe misses. I mean, look at this from Todd. This is not even a good draw. Todd's turn three play was Spellskite, no land pass. You know? Yeah. Still missing <laughs> blue. Yeah. This hand is a mutagenic growth and three blue cards. All right, so can Joe see, you know, he's going to have to take advantage of the weakness that Todd's showing here. And you see, despite getting Tron for turn three, Joe will go for Pyroclasm. Cannot afford to miss. He clasms Todd will mutagenic growth in response. Glistener Elf still alive. For Lissette, it will be Expedition Map post-combat, and he'll pass the turn. If Todd draws a pump spell, it's game over. It's not quite a pump spell, but it's the next best thing in a blue source of mana. All right, gets Breeding Pool. So he has two with the Glistener Elf and the Pendlehaven. Can he find the rest of them? Looks like Serum Visions, a couple Blighted Agents in hand for Todd. Now, Spellskite, despite, though it may not seem good here, is actually a bit of an insurance package for Todd. It does help against Karn, which is a nice insurance package, and that's why you saw Todd play the spell sky the previous turn. He had Mutagenic Growth to protect himself from the Pyroclasm, but had nothing to protect himself from a Karn. So that was his hedge. Right, and that was a worry, right? Because Ta Joe just, despite having, you know, he just went for straight turn three Tron, and I guess I would say, hey, if he, if he topped a Karn, he would have lost to it. Right. So heads up. Uh, draws off Serum Visions, and it's Groundswell. So a Groundswell, the Glistener Elf, swing it, and that's the game. Turn four, missing blue mana for all but the last turn, and Joe having a Pyroclasm. It's really a bad matchup for Joe. It is, this is, it is this not is great. This is miserable. All right, so <laughs> let's go to the sideboard. I mean, I've heard Tron players, sometimes they'll show up with lots of sideboard for this. I have also seen them show up with nothing and claiming that the matchup is just not really winnable. Joe's got a little bit, but most of the cards he has are incidentally helpful in other matchups, so he's not really going out of his way here. Three Nature's Claim, two Thragtusk, two Crucible of Worlds, two Running Volley, a Ghost Quarter, an Ancient Grudge, a Spellskite, a Feed the Clans, an Ulamog, and a Worm Coil Engine. Dude. The Ghost Quarter's nice. The three copies mm -hmm. of, you, you know, you had to start looking at some cards here. Yeah, it you're can gonna, hit a Nexus, right? You're going to bring in the Spellskite. 
Great. That, that, that one's easy. I think you actually got to start looking at some cards like Nature's Claim and Rending Volley. I, I know that there aren't that many targets that these cards hit, but Joe is so desperate for interaction that he might have to go to some of these more desperate cards. So Nature's Claim can hit Ink Moth Nexus, but not the other two. Uh, Rending Volley can hit Blighted Agent, but not the other two. But I don't, sure. I don't know how much of, Joe, of the critical mass of Joe's deck he's willing to reduce here. I think there's more of an argument for Nature's Claim style effects here because the Pyroclasms will protect him against the creatures. But I think he needs more interaction beyond the Spell Sky and the Ghost Quarter he has in his sideboard. All right, well, looking at Todd's sideboard, he has a set of Nature's Claims, three Dispels, two Twisted Images, two Relics, a Carrion Call, a Viridian Corruptor, a Necropede, and a Spell Skite. You know, he almost doesn't have to change anything, but he might do it. What do we have? Well, I think the two copies of Twisted Image are a nice way to answer Spellskite, and the four copies of Nature's Claim, all sorts of artifacts in Tron that you can destroy. You can break up their mana early on in the game. That buys you a lot of time. So uh, I think those six cards are easy includes. Maybe the Viridian Corruptor as well. Yeah, do, is something like Carrion Call, ne I mean, good or even necessary in this matchup? I think Carrying Call is more for matchups where your opponent is casting Path to Exile and have a lot of removal spells, so you get to four mana and you just need more threats anyway. This matchup is pretty fast on the balance and Joe is not assisting Todd get to get to more mana, so I think it's just going to be the copies of Twisted Image and the Nature's Claims. Right. One thing we've been talking about this weekend over at StarCityGames.com is the holiday sale we've been having running. That started on the first of the month and is going all month. They're going to have from December 1st to January 1st a new deal each day for the holidays. Today that we have up to 20% off selected promo lands. You see them over at the left. You're going to want to get that one. That one's going to end on Monday. So we new items will be added next week. Get those this weekend before next. Yeah, all month long. Website gets updated every Monday through Friday, 11 a.m. Eastern time. So always check back, check out the new deals. And there'll also be stocking stuffer deals all month long on things like figurines, dice bags, sleeves, deck boxes, extended art land. So a lot of sales to check out all through the month of December. Make sure to be heading over to the website every day, Monday through Friday. Again, the updates occur 11 a.m. Eastern time. All right, we'll go ahead and back to match. Todd, Todd making a short affair of that one. Won that one on turn four through resistance on Joe's side. Joe did have a pyroclasm that didn't net him anything. Tron's a deck with a lot of, you know, 75-25 and 25-75 type of matchups. And yeah, this is one of the This is one of the 25-75 ones. It might actually be worse than that. Yeah, I mean, and I've heard it from a lot of Tron pilots. This is, this is their unwinnable matchup. And I think one of the, the difficulties is that it doesn't even put huge amounts of pressure on Todd. No. You know, it's, it's not like Todd has to thread a needle to win this one. He can kind of just green light play everything and, and that'll do. Even in the matchups again, and I think Zoo is very good against Tron as well for a lot of the same reasons that Infect is good. At least when Tron goes Worm Coil Engine or turn three corner of the play, there is pressure on the Zoo deck to end the game as soon sure. as possible. You can't play through those cards for very long. If Worm Coil Engine resolves, that doesn't even really do anything. It's just a blocker. It's if that. It only blocks one of Todd's creatures. Right. Karn, Karn is a little slow to bring to bear. Sometimes it's going to be good, but sometimes it does, it does very little. So the fact that Joe does not defend himself very well and that his payoff cards don't really impact the game very much means this matchup's very poor. Remember Green Red Tron was... The weapon of choice of, in, at the Season 2 Invitational, we had Ali Antrazi qualifying for the Players' Championship on the back of it. A perfect 3-0 sweep over Chris Van Meter in the finals. If you, if you look at Tron's good matchups or bad matchups, the easiest way to do it is how good are Karn and Worm Coil? If both of them are good, the matchup's probably good. If one of them's good, the matchup is even, maybe shaky, maybe a little bit positive. If both are bad, the matchup's probably very rough, and this is one of those kind of matchups. All right, well, Todd kept on six. He did scry to the top. For Joe, it looks like he may have some Tron set up. It is a one Tron piece and an expedition map to start the game. And he's got to be happy that there's no Glistener Elf on the other side on turn one. Well, I think Todd's hand is a Blight Agent and all pump spells. And this might be one of those hands where even getting to Tron on three with a play may not let him untap. Yeah, so in this situation, does Todd, can he afford to risk the Blighted Agent on turn two, or does he have to turn three in? Well, I, I, I think he's got to cast if it's in his hand. I, I mean, there is some danger in just letting Joe go uncontested through several turns. All right, well, Todd's draw for the turn was a Glistener Elf. He actually plays Ink Moth Nexus, so now no Soldiers of Infectors. He'll go ahead and cast Blighted Agent. Yeah. When he has the Nexus, then I think it's a no-brainer for him to put his threat into play. He's got a backup threat. Yeah. Joe will crack map. His second land, though, was not a Tron piece. It was Grove of the Burn Willows. So Tron is turn four at the earliest on Lissette's side. 
Let's see, grabs power plant. So having mine and power plant now, one to go. As you were saying, if Joe doesn't kill Blighted Agent, Todd may just be able to full combo him next turn. Yeah, and this is why I thought Joe needed to consider some cards like Rending Volley, even though they don't kill everything. Uh, he's just, he needs every reasonable piece of interaction to get his hands on. Well, he's going to play the power plant he found. We see the tower is hiding out in Joe's hand, so he does have Tron for next turn. Plays Chromatic Star, and that's exactly what you mentioned. It is a Rending Volley off Grove of the Vernwells to take care of Blighted Agent, so well played on Joe's side. Yeah, it's not pretty. You know, you, you know that Rending Volley can get stuck in your hand some games, you're going to die, but Joe's got to try at least. And we, because of Gitaxian Probe, we'll see the remaining cards in Joe's hand. He's got the Tron. That's Urza's Tower for the third Tron piece. Looks like he also has a Ghost Quarter, a Sylvan Scrying, and an Ancient Stirrings, I believe. So the problem here is that I don't think next turn Joe can put himself into a position to defend himself against the Nexus and the Glistener Elf in Todd's hand. I suppose if Joe draws a copy of Pyroclasm and he plays play the Ghost, Ghost Quarter, Quarter. and yep. then he's got some defense up. Yeah, but he, he would have to top deck it. He does have, between Sylvan Scrying and Ancient Stirrings, he can very possibly find a Ghost Quarter or a Karn. I mean, he could play one threat, I think, pretty easily. Well, the problem is that Karn's no good and Warm Coil's no good. Because right. there's only one thing that Karn can kill, and Warm Coil can't block the Nexus. So if Joe just curves into one of his big plays and Todd's got a real hand, that's the end of the game. He needs something along the lines of Pyroclasm plus Ghost Quarter. All right, well, on Todd's side, it was a Glistener Elf, kept two mana up. So you go back to Joe. The draw for the turn, though, was not the Pyroclasm you were hoping for. It was another copy of Urza's Mine. So on Joe's side, he'll go ahead and make Tron. So now has eight mana with which to work with. Work. He has no threat, but maybe can find one. And he's going to go two Crack Star. Let's see what he draws there. Believe he has green floating, green colorless floating. And the green will be spent on Ancient Stirrings. Two Pyroclasms on top of his deck. Wish he could grab them. Well, I, I think that Joe here needed to consider maybe just breaking the star as the first order of business. I know that you want to Tron and find a big play, but because both of his big plays mean it's very likely that he ends up dead the next turn, I think that I would have gone for broke and tried to find Pyroclasm, because I don't think Worm Coil or Karn changes your fortunes too much here. He found Oblivion Stone off that Stirrings, so he'll be able to cast that, but just four mana up, not five, means it's, it's one turn away from breaking. Yep. And now the coast is clear for Todd to unleash his hand. Yeah, I'll see just what else Joe has. And he'll pass. Dangerous position for Joe Lissette. If he gets to untap, he's got a fair amount of control over the game. But I don't know if he'll get to untap. You see Oblivion Stone here. Unfortunately for Joe, only destroys non-land permanents, so it's not actually an answer to the Ink Moth. Yep, and th this came up when I was watching this deck play against Merfolk, and Mutaball's a slow clock. And the Nexus is lethal <laughs> in one shot. Yeah. All right, so here's Todd. Might of old Krosa main phase. Glistener Elf looking to become a 5-5. Five -five. That's not what Joe wants to see at all. And will we go again? Become immense. There's the whole yard. I said one attack is all it would take. He'll swing, and that's going to be match 2-0 for Todd Anderson. Easy breezy. Pa powerful, quick, not unexpected, but uh, dominant. And I, I don't know if there's a ton for Joe to do the matchup. L like I said, I think that I would have tried to go on for broke there and just hope to hit a pyroclasm uh, and play Ghost Quarter, and maybe that's good enough to buy you some time. But uh, even if Joe's draw steps break perfectly for him there, I think he's going to find that matchup to be uh, an uphill battle every single time. Yeah, I mean, when you said it before, if he drew Pyroclasm, he had a shot at taking care of both creatures. But that whole game, it was Joe literally had to kill Todd's creatures on every, as soon as they were played. If Todd, if Todd ever got one attack in, it was lethal. And Joe even 